Masayoshi-san, the man who once lost 99% of his wealth overnight, who was told he was too stupid for doing business the way he was doing, who was bold enough to present his drawing to Steve Jobs. In today's episode, we will discuss the life of Masayoshi-san. Masayoshi was born in Japan in 1957 to Korean immigrants. Japan was building itself from the ground up after the war. Years of reconstruction were required to recover from thousands of air raids, including the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Japan's rule on Korea had ended, but it took another 20 years before South Korean President Park Chung-hee agreed to normalize relations with the country in exchange for hundreds of millions of dollars in loans and grants. In these 20 years, Koreans were a minority. Living in Japan meant abuse on a daily basis. Masayoshi, with his heritage, was bullied at school. In Japan, Koreans were forced to change their name to a Japanese-sounding name. His family chose to name him Masayoshi. Because he avoided school, 16-year-old Masayoshi started reading books on his own. One of the books he read gave him permission to dream. The young kid, who was told his fortune is decided by what the majority says, suddenly started to dream big. He wanted to meet the author, Den Fujita, one of Japan's famous entrepreneurs who introduced Japan with McDonald's. Masayoshi repeatedly called Fujita's office, asking for a meeting, but his requests were ignored. He was told successful businessmen don't take time out of their busy schedules to meet 16-year-olds. After calling for months every day, he realized that if he were to buy a ticket and visit Fujita in person, the cost would be less than the phone calls. With that, he decided to book a ticket to Tokyo. After landing, his first visit was at Fujita's office. The assistant who would usually hang up on him told him Fujita is a very busy man, but because you are here in person, let me ask him. Masayoshi told her, Talk to him and say exactly what I'm saying to you. You don't have to look at me. You don't have to talk to me. You can keep on working, whatever you're doing. I just want to see his face for three minutes and then I will leave. Finally, the young boy was about to meet one of his heroes. The two talk for 15 minutes. Fujita told the young, ambitious boy that if he wanted to make it big, he should look into computers as that would be the future. Taking his words to heart, young Masayoshi looked for countries where he could improve his knowledge of computers. He decided to pack his bag for America. The drive to the airport was one of the hardest for Masayoshi. This drive would not only change his future, but also the future of technology in Japan. He saw his mother in tears and his father completely silent. Although they were both supporting Masayoshi with his choices, letting their young child go into an unknown world was not easy. His mother in fear that she would never see her child again, told him, This is goodbye forever. Whoever goes to the West never returns. Take care of yourself and always keep us in your memories. After seeing his mother heartbroken, he made a promise to her. Don't worry, mom. I will return. Young Masayoshi boarded the plane, remembering his promise. A promise that he would remind himself of every day. Masayoshi ended up studying economics at UC Berkeley. Remembering his promise, he started to look for ways to make money. He asked friends if there was a way for him to work for 5 minutes a day and make $10,000 per month. Everyone told him he was nuts, but for Masayoshi, the promise he made to his mother was important. Looking around, he figured, working at a job will not get him what he wants. He wrote down 250 inventions that he could work on to fulfill his promise. One of the inventions was the electronic dictionary. He meets professors at his university, asking them if building a translator is possible and if anyone would be willing to help out. Most professors gave him nothing but encouraging words, but one of them, Forrest Moser, decides to help him out. 
The student and the professor built a prototype and filed a patent. Their invention was seen by Sharp. Sharp approached him and offered $1.7 million. Masayoshi had made his first million. His professor later said that he didn't know any electronics, but it was clear from the beginning that he was an entrepreneurial genius. His next million came from installing video game machines. Japan was famous for video games, and in America, arcade was just taking off. Masayoshi saw this trend and started to import games from Japan. He went around selling them to restaurant owners on a profit-sharing basis. He graduated in 1980. He'd already made a couple of millions. With the money, he was finally able to fulfill the promise he made to his mother. He returned back to Japan. Back in Japan, he wanted to start a new business. Thinking about what he could do, he wrote 40 different ideas. For about a year and a half, he did nothing but make plans. The money he had was running out. His family was worried. His education was going to a waste. Masayoshi visited libraries, read all books he could to come up with the next big thing. Who knew all he had to do was remember the visit to his hero? Remembering his meeting with Fujita, computers were becoming common but people did not know much about software. With that, he decided to start a bank specifically for software. SoftBank launched in 1981. Masayoshi did not know how to program, so instead of building software, he was going to sell them for others. But things did not go smoothly. Initially, the company had two part-time employees. Every morning, Masayoshi would stand on two Apple boxes and say, In five years, I'm going to have $75 million in sales. His first project was to show customers the huge library of software he had. For that, he started to receive the biggest booth at conventions. His booth size was bigger than that of Sony or Toshiba. He would call software vendors and offer them space in his booth free of charge. His plan was to have people sign up, and once they signed up, they would hopefully buy from SoftBank. But this turned out to be an utter disaster. He got nothing. No one signed up. The two employees that started with him couldn't stay any longer. With months of losses, laughing customers, and no business, Masayoshi was questioning his decisions. But then, his phone rang. A company in Osaka was starting a PC shop and they needed someone to install software. Masayoshi was asked to pay them a visit in Osaka. His response, I am busy. In reality, he was not busy, he just didn't have money to travel. The company was called Joshin Denki, third largest home electronic dealer in Japan. The next day, Joshin Denki called again and said that their president was coming to Tokyo and if Masayoshi could meet him to discuss some plans, they would love to meet. The meeting with the president was bold. Masayoshi told him that if they wanted to do business with him, Joshin would have to cancel all their contracts with other vendors and deal only with SoftBank for their software needs. This was a bold move coming from a man who didn't have any money, who had very little business experience and no product. The president of Joshin saw the passion in Masayoshi and told him that Joshin would focus on their other products. As far as software is concerned, they will hand it over to SoftBank. Masayoshi had made his first deal. After the deal, SoftBank went from making $10,000 a month to $2.3 million. By 1984, SoftBank owned 50% of Japan's retail market for computer software. By 1994, he bought 33% stake in Yahoo. In 1996, he started to invest millions in internet companies. His net worth was increasing at a rate of $10 billion a week. But then, in the late 1990s, the dot-com bubble shook the stock market. He lost $70 billion of his fortune. 93% of SoftBank's market value was wiped out. Top executives sat around a table to discuss their next move. Masayoshi knew the power of technology, 
and through his connections, he visited Steve Jobs. Masayoshi got exclusivity for iPhone in Japan. In 1999, a young Chinese entrepreneur came to Masayoshi. Masayoshi knew that the business plan presented to him was poor, but the eyes of this young entrepreneur were strong. He ended up investing $20 million in Alibaba. With a portfolio of companies including Alibaba and Apple, Masayoshi was back on track. Through tough times, Masayoshi has built something extraordinary. His life truly does teach that hard times are there to help us be strong. Until next time, have a good one.